And Michael, take a, a big picture, zoom out for us on what's at stake for him tonight. You point to FDR's for freedom speech in 1941, obviously wartime, a, a, a bigger a bigger challenge, but uh, let's you know, talk about the challenges tonight. Well, this is a real historical moment. We could be a dictatorship next year if Donald Trump is elected and carries through on his threats and carries through on his threats to suspend the Constitution. That's what's at stake. So Joe Biden could finesse it and talk about other things, or he could confront the elephant in the room and say, you know, this is, this is a year when we Americans have to choose whether we're, we're going to live as a democracy, as a republic, or as an authoritarian system. That's what FDR was doing in 1941. Nazis, fascists, imperial Japanese were rampaging around the world. And he said, you Americans have to choose. And also, for you Americans who think that we need to be fascist at home to compete with other fascist governments, which a lot of people were saying, he said, we need these four freedoms. Freedom from want and fear, freedom of speech and religion. And Susan, I want to talk to both of you about something we haven't seen, I don't think, anything this brutal since Lee Atwater back in 1988 with his campaign ad, uh, which is that new super PAC ad, and it's all over the place, uh, actually suggesting that Joe Biden will not survive another term and also really demeaning the vice president. Susan, you first. We've never seen uh, routinely this kind of brutality in political ads is this that sort of attack but brace yourself because i think we're going to see a lot of it this year uh shalom first and foremost i want to give all praises honor and glory to yahweh bahasham yahweh shai bahasham racha kodesh double honors to the elders and the apostles of great millstone and peace and blessings to the elect and um before i get into this this lesson i want to start off with this precept here in the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 126. And it reads, It is time for thee, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, to work, for they have made void thy law. And that is pretty much what, what is going on, you know, around the world, you know, which, <clears throat> to lock you. With every event and every situation that takes place, you know, those of us that understand, <coughs> we know that this is all the workings of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. As the scriptures say that he declares the end from the beginning. So, you know, as all these different events are unfolding, if you're paying attention, you're seeing it's it's on a worldwide scale, but also you have things that are happening internally in different countries, right? Not just America. Um, but I'm going to read this article. It's fairly short, but it's a pretty interesting one which, once again, pushing towards the direction of that, you know, that that uh, dystopian society, right? But anyway, the headline reads, this is, this is an article from ZeroHedge.com. Watch, MSNBC declares America could be a dictatorship next year. And before reading this, something that's interesting to keep in mind is, remember that the mainstream media is primarily owned by these elites. When I say that, I mean, you know, through a long chain, right? But they're the ones who are sort of influencing what the people see and what they hear and call news. And that's because the MSM is, or just media in general, is <clears throat> a medium of communication between the elites and the average people. But it's done in a subconscious way because it's not like a phone call right that 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 these uh elites are are making to the people however they are influencing the uh actions through the perspective of the people by what they display onto them and by what they push out to them so when these different news channels start coming out and pushing certain ideologies or ideas or testing the waters with certain information out there, keep in mind that it's all based on a narrative. Prior to the whole um, uh, uh, mailing in the voting ballots and all of that, 
they started to to um to uh, 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 uh you know touch on that. Oh, you know, it's it's possible that there could be, you know, this could be a fraudulent election. You know, people might need to mail in their their you know, and then also the the whole demic situation. But they always you know test the pulse of the people when they throw out certain certain you know ideas out there. So this one here, as you can see, <coughs> or as you just heard, um, MSNBC declares America could be a dictatorship next year. And what they're saying is, as I'm about to read, if Trump gets elected, then he might, uh, he very well might turn it into a dictatorship. While previewing Joe Biden's jacked up State of the Union address Thursday, uh, an MSNBC talking head declared that if Biden didn't win or doesn't win the election, the U.S. could be a, could be a dictatorship next year. Well, if it if it does end up that way, well, you'll see how, right? Because all the 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 moving pieces, you know, have been are being put in place now. The network brought on presidential historian uh, Michael Besclaus, um, who compared the unhinged screaming Biden <laughs> to FDR, warning Americans about the rise of fascism. Anchor Andrea Mitchell asked um, Michael, take a big picture, zoom out for us on what's at stake for Biden tonight, adding you point to FDR's Four Freedoms uh, speech in 1941. Obviously, wartime, a bigger challenge. But let's, you know, talk about the challenges tonight. So Michael proclaimed, this is a real historical moment, adding, we could be a dictatorship next year if Donald Trump is elected and carries through on his threats and carries through on his threats to suspend the Constitution. Wow. So whether this is a, a, a viable threat, right, that Trump made, if he even did, or not, isn't the point here. The point here is that that this thought has been pushed out there now. And in most cases, that's really all they need to test the pulse, to test the waters, to sort of already plant the seeds in people's minds that this is a possibility. Look, people are talking about it. Okay. And the more you talk about something, the more real it starts to seem. So now they're saying, oh, oh if Trump is trying to suspend the Constitution. He might, you know, turn this place, his rule, his um, election or his, um, uh, damn, I forgot the, the name for that, but he might turn his rule or whatever into a dictatorship. And the more they talk about it, the more real it seems. So who knows? Maybe he might justify it with with the, the migrant crime, amongst many other things. He continued, this is a year when we Americans have to choose whether we're going to live as a democracy, as a republic, or as an authoritarian system. That's what FDR was doing in 1941. Nazis, fascist, imperial Japanese were rampaging around the world. And he said, you Americans have to choose, which is an illusion of choice because the choice is not really yours. This is a year when we Americans have to choose whether we're going to live as a democracy, as a republic, or as an authoritarian system, <clears throat> Michael declared. Which is very interesting, and there's a news clip of it. So maybe what I'll do is I'll play the clip <clears throat> at the beginning, if if I can, if I'm able to, uh, while I'm editing this video. Truly deranged, <laughs> MSNBC will happily suggest that Trump is going to suspend the Constitution, but then literally laugh at the notion that mass immigration on an unprecedented scale is a concern. Now, I mean, would be interesting, right? If they're 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 pushing this out here, and then maybe some major event similar, but but uh, uh, um, you know, more deadly than than nine eleven happens, you know, close to this election or, or you know, sometime around there, that then justifies having to take so-called drastic or draconian measures and 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 maybe this may be something and I'm just throwing this out there this is a random scenario right but maybe this is something caused by people who snuck in through the border and now they're like see 
boom. Because remember, these these people don't justify their their causes just by words. Okay, that's the, they they do it through events. That is the the events are the justification because they need to be able to look back and point to certain things and say, look at this. This is the reason why we did this. Look at that. That is why we have the Patriot Act today. Look at this event that happened over here. This is why we're banning guns. This is why we're doing this. This is why we're doing that. Because words don't trigger the same level of intensity, emotions, thought, all of that as, you know, actual events do. Talking about a school shooting where children died versus actually experiencing or living through it is a different story. If you read a, if you read a book that, that gave that account and they said it was based on a real story, that would be different than if you came home one day, turned on the news and heard that this just happened, breaking news. See, so they go based off of events because when people live through these events, it's easier for them to, to you know, bring about a solution and justify Hey, you see this right here? This is why we got to do this. So definitely look out for that, all right? Because we're, we're definitely living in those times. And that's why I read that precept in the beginning, that it is time for thee, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh, Shai, to work, for they have made void thy law. And that's what the Lord is doing. All of, these, all of this is going to come full circle right back to prophecy. Anyway, with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying and informative to the elect. Quick and straight to the point and... In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash, and until next time, Shalom.